Hello and welcome to Let's Translate Manga. We are looking at Colette Decides to Die, which is a rather popular shoujo manga series this time around. And in this series, we look at manga that is not commercially released in English. We look at the Japanese version and I have my patrons translate it into English. We only look at a few pages of the series. We're not looking to, you know, provide a complete translation or scanlation. This is primarily just to teach people Japanese and to teach people how to translate. Check the video description for more information about this. Now, if you have seen other Let's Translate Manga videos in my series, uh, I usually go through each panel in Japanese and then explain one word at a time what everything means, but this time around I'm going to assume that everybody watching this has a more advanced level of Japanese and that you can basically already understand everything in Japanese without my translating it for you and walking you through it. We're just going to go straight to the patron translations instead and compare and contrast what everybody did. Quick reminder, there kind of is no right or wrong answer. I mean, obviously, some translations are more correct than others, I suppose, but uh, there are many, many different ways of translating something, and that is what I hope most people will take away most from this series. Okay, so Colette Decides to Die. A little bit of a backstory, because we are not starting on page one of volume one. Uh, to set up the story, Colette is a healer in, um, you know, this seems like a pretty ancient times, uh, you know, it's pre-technology, and she's a healer, and she's pretty much the only healer in her village, so she is in constant demand, she is not getting any sleep, she is extremely burnt out, and she is just sick of it one day, and she comes upon a well, and she says, oh wow, you know, come to think of it, I heard that there was some legend that all wells connect to the underworld. Like, I'm just gonna jump in this well. <laughs> she, she's just so delirious from lack of sleep, and she's so burnt out from her job. Gee, I have no idea what that feels like, that she's just gonna jump in a well. And so she jumps in the well, and um, that's where we're starting now. So page eight of volume one of the manga. We have the sound effects buku buku buku, and Colette saying uh koko wa, and then the sound effects hita 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 hita. Patron A translated the sound effects as blub blub blub, ug, where dot 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 question mark and drip drip drip. Patron B translated the first sound effects as blub 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 blub. Colette saying erg dot 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 and then huh where am I? And then the sound effects are mp, tump, tump, and tump. Patron C translated the first sound effects as blub blub blub. This is a very popular translation. <laughs> Colette says ug and then where am I? And then the hira hira sound effects from patron C are shf, 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 shf. Very interesting. We got a good variety of sound effects for the hira hira hira. And patron D, glub, glub, glub. Okay, we've got <laughs> some, some variation. Instead of blub, we've got glub. She says, ug, where am I? And then these sound effects are a and sway, sway, sway. All right, so we the main uh, difference between these translations is the sw the the final sound effect here. The, oh, it's not hira hira hita hita. Yes. So, um, sound effects are hard, man. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of different ways of translating them. You can go with um, words like what the sound effect is. Uh, or you can go with more like what the sound effect sounds like. And sometimes it's really difficult to tell what that sound effect actually is. So buku buku buku, that one's pretty clear. That's the sound of her going underwater and it's like the bubbling sounds of water. So blub blub blub, glug glug glug, all those sound effects work very nicely for that. Hita hita hita. And as you can see, it starts very tiny and it's just ta and then hita hita hita, it gets bigger and bigger. So it's the sound effect of this skeleton dude approaching Colette in the in her cell. That's what the sound of hita 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 is. Yeah, so if you look up hita hita in Japanese, as I'm doing right now in the background, like hita hita no tsukaikata wa, a lot of sound effects are like that. You want to actually look them up in Japanese and find definitions for them in Japanese to give you a real sense of what they actually are, because sound effects often have many different uses. But yeah, it's, it's often to do with water. The sound of water sort of like lapping against things. And it's also in this manga panel, it's being used to express the skeleton person approaching Colette from the distance. So it's that kind of a sound effect. So comparing what the patrons did, we have drip, drip, drip. I think that's a little more uh, from patron A, that's a little more relying on its connection to water. And I think that works fine. 
uh, patron B went with tump tump tump, which is very abstract. It's more just like the actual sound of it. And I could see tump 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 as sort of like footsteps. Um, but the ump makes it sort of uh, damp and dank. Like I can imagine it's like quiet footsteps in a damp dungeon cell, which is what is actually happening if you look at the manga. Patron C, you've got shuf shuf shuf. That kind of works too. It it's similar to like the sound that a swishing footstep might make in water. And then patron D, you've got sway, sway, sway. I think that's the, the least correct, I suppose, in the sense that it, the skeleton isn't exactly swaying. I mean, maybe the way the skeleton is walking towards her, the skeleton is sort of swaying back and forth. But yeah, I think the other sound effects convey uh, what's actually happening a little more. Again, this is a very difficult sound effect to translate. I don't know what I would have done. Uh, but there you go. Next page, page nine. So Colette sees the skeleton, he, and then she says, Do bikurista, uso michi no seibutsu densetsu seiko. So this densetsu seiko, I just need to explain very quickly. Um, she's referencing what she was saying on the former page. Uh, she was talking about the densetsu, the legend about um, wells leading to the underworld. And so she's asking here, oh my God, like was, was the densetsu, was the legend a success? So that's what that's referencing. And then the skeleton says, oya, watashi ga kowaku nai no ka? Uh, and then Colette says, soria watashi kutsushi da mono, gaikotsu kurai nan tomo nai wa yo? And then the skeleton says, nanto kutsushi to na? <laughs> and then there's dots, and then Colette says, ne, koko wa doko na no ka shira? <laughs> All right, so let's look at these two panels with what the patrons said. Patron A, Colette, eek, Colette, you, you surprised me. No way, a cryptid? The legend was true? Skeleton says, what, don't I scare you? Colette, well, I'm a physician. I see skeletons all the time. Skeleton, you're a physician? Then Colette, hey, where are we anyway? And um, patron A made a note at the top. Um, I translated uh, kusushi as physician because it sounds more old timey than doctor, but less mystical than healer. So that was patron A's reasoning there. All right, patron B, Colette says, yeek, I like yeek. <laughs> Colette, phew, you scared me. Colette, wait, are you real? The legend was true? Skeleton, yeah, you do not fear me? Colette, nah, I'm a physician. I see lots of, I see a lot of bones. Skeleton, yaha, a physician? Hmm, Colette, hey, could you tell me where we are? Patron C, Colette goes, yee. And then Colette says, ahem, that startled me. No way, an unknown life form. Then the legend was true? Skeleton, you're not afraid of me? Colette, of course not. I'm an herbalist after all. A skeleton or two isn't going to phase me. Skeleton, my, an herbalist you say? Colette, hey, where am I anyway? And then patron D, Colette says, what? What? A shock. So patron D connected those two. And then Colette says, no way, an undiscovered creature. The find of the century. Skeleton, oh, do I frighten you? Colette, well, I am a healer. Bones don't bother me. Skeleton, oh my, a healer, you say. And then Colette says, hey, so what is this place? And then patron D made a note for healer. Um, the run runner up choice for that would have been herbalist. Yeah, if you look at the kanji for, for um, kusushi, uh, the kusu in there is the same uh, kusu in kusuri, like drugs, medicine. And then she is like, it's a very commonly used suffix or prefix for like shisho master. So it's like a master of um, medicine, basically a medicine master, a medicinist, an herbalist. Yeah. So personally for me, I like healer the best um, for a couple reasons. One, it's very generic um, in this time period. Uh, I, I feel like healer does encompass a little more what she does. In future chapters, I have read this entire first volume. You'll notice like she um, heals injuries as well as sickness. Like she binds people's like sprained ankles and whatnot. So she does more than just like an herbalist implies a little bit more like, oh, she gives people herbs to heal them or makes salves out of out of herbs. Um, but she's she does everything, man. She's she's like a doctor by modern terms. Um, everyone was correct to not call her like a doctor uh, because this is kind of before <laughs> modern medicine. But the other reason that I like healer is that it's just shorter. It has fewer letters in it. So it's going to be a lot easier for your letterer to fit it in wherever it needs to go. Uh, you know, 
that's that's it's less important i think than you know what the best term is for the vibe of this series and for what she actually is but yeah i personally like healer but none of the other choices were wrong or bad um so let's look over these a little bit more so there's a little um, disagreement when Colette says, Uso, michi no seibutsu, this michi no seibutsu. Um, so patron A translated michi no seibutsu as a cryptid. I like that choice. Like michi no seibutsu literally means like an unknown life form. Uh, cryptid, that, that's basically what a cryptid is. And it's shorter, <laughs> it's more concise. I like it. Uh, the legend was true. That's fine. I like that choice. Patron B, wait, are you real? The legend was true. This works too, in a different way. So notice how patron B didn't go with like the actual translation of, wait, you're a cryptid? The legend was true. Patron B is, is connecting this a little more logically. Wait, are you real? The legend was true. It's not so important that this skeleton is a cryptid or that, it, he, that he's an unidentified life form. What's most important is she's realizing here, wait a minute, I actually went to Hades uh, when I fell down the well. Um, that's, that's kind of the vibe that we're actually getting when she says, oh my God, you're an un unidentified life form. Oh my God, you're a cryptid. So that means I actually did go to Hades. That's, that's what this actually means means, uh, the subtext of it. Not what she's literally saying, but what she means. So my suspicion is that's why patron B went with, wait, are you real? Even though she was literally asking, wait, you're a cryptid or wait, you're an unidentified life form. So I, I like this choice too as well. It's, and it's nice and short. Note how small this uh, balloon is. You don't wanna cram too many words in there. Patron C did, no way, an unknown life form, then the legend was true. I like then the legend was true. An unknown life form, again, it's very literal. It is exactly what she's saying in Japanese. Um, I don't think it gives, um, it, it, it's, I don't know, it's a little too scientific, I suppose. Yeah, again, it's not wrong. Let's see, patron, yeah, and then patron D did an undiscovered creature. Then the find of the century, that that I would say is just wrong. Um, maybe there was some logic to translating um, so the legend was true as the find of the century. Um, either that or patron D neglected to um, remember that some pages came before this. In the prompt, I did say, hey, by the way, this is not the very beginning of the manga. But yeah, if you if you had if patron D had translated the pages that came before that, then they might have made that connection of, oh, the legend we're talking about is something she was referencing on an earlier page. Yeah, an undiscovered creature isn't exactly wrong for Michi no Seibutsu. It, it's just, again, the point which patron B really got to was that Colette is realizing in this frame that, oh, so I actually did go to Hades because I am looking at this cryptid. I'm looking at this creature that's not human. Therefore, I'm, I'm in hell. I'm in Hades. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the skeleton. So note that um, the skeleton is speaking in kind of a, a more old timey uh, Japanese oya. Um, he's saying watashi in katakana, which kind of implies that it it's an odd <laughs> way for him to speak, I suppose. Katakana does some interesting things when it's used in um, Japanese words that aren't supposed to be katakana. Uh, so he's speaking in a, a more old-timey male sort of speech pattern. And Colette is speaking actually in a rather contemporary manner, uh, considering that this is an old uh, story. All right, so patron A translated that little exchange as, what, don't I scare you? Colette, well, I'm a physician. I see skeletons all the time. Patron B, yeah, you do not fear me. And then Colette says, nah, I'm a physician. I see a lot of bones. <laughs> Patron C, you're not afraid of me? Colette, of course not. I'm an herbalist after all. A skeleton or two isn't enough to phase me. And patron D, uh, the skeleton says, oh, do I not frighten you? And Colette says, well, I am a healer. Bones don't bother me. Okay, so notice a few of these differences. So I'm gonna start with patrons B and D took a bit of a similar approach. Note how their skeleton creature speaks in a little more of an, you know, old time sort of grand way. Oh, do I not frighten you? And yeah, you do not fear me. <laughs> it's like I can almost imagine like Worf from Star Trek speaking like that in like that older um, sort of speech. I like that for the skeleton. And then 
Colette's response from both patrons B and D is nice and short. Nah, I'm a physician. I see a lot of bones. And note how patron B, like, nah, I'm a physician. This is very contemporary speak, which is good. As I mentioned earlier, Colette, a lot of the people in this series actually speak rather contemporarily. Like, later in one of the chapters, um, one of the uh, peasants talks about an Ikemen radar, <laughs> like literally Ikemen data <laughs> in English. So a lot of modern slang and modern speech patterns from some of these characters. So I think it's good to keep that. Uh, Colette saying, nah, I'm a physician. I see a lot of bones. It's, it's the right vibe. And then patron D, well, I am a healer. Bones don't bother me. That's, that's great. Nice and concise, nice and short, and it sounds a little more contemporary. Uh, patron A, skeleton, what? Don't I scare you? Colette, well, I'm a physician. I, ski, I see skeletons all the time. Colette's response is fine. Although, again, physician, I'm not, not as big a fan of that choice. I prefer healer. Uh, skeleton, what? Don't I scare you? This is a little contemporary. It's a little neutral. Um, I prefer the skeleton sounding a little more, yeah, you do not fear me. <laughs> like, I prefer him having that kind of voice. So patron C, note how long patron C's uh, response from Colette is. It's correct. Skeleton, you're not afraid of me. Again, that could be a little more like sounding old, sounding more... Uh, more like Worf from Star Trek. <laughs> this is a very strange connection to be making, but I find um, as a translator, when you're giving characters character voices, it does help to kind of think of a character that speaks in English that you are very familiar with and like use that character voice as sor sort of an inspiration for your translations. If you decide, oh, you know what? This character reminds me of um, George Costanza from Seinfeld think, okay, well, would George Costanza talk like this? It can put you in a great frame of mind for how to give your character's voice. So that that's why I just keep saying Worf right now, because in my mind, that's kind of what I'm thinking of. It's like, well, would Worf talk like this? How would Worf uh, from Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine say this line? Um, but pick any character that works for you. Uh, anyway, but it's mostly Colette's uh, response I wanted to talk about. Of course not. I'm an herbalist after all. A skeleton or two isn't enough to phase me. Just note how long that is. Note how many words that is. It's correct, but look how small the, the balloon is. Um, and a good test to see if your uh, translation is too long for the balloon is to type the Japanese uh, underneath your translation and just see the physical length of your translation compared to the Japanese. It's a bit long. And note how patrons B and D in particular uh, had the same meaning exactly, but uh, it was just a lot tighter, a lot shorter. So the next, the next panel, the skeleton says, Nanto kusushi to na? And then there's some dots after that. And then Colette, ne, koko wa doko na no kashira? Patron A translated that little exchange as, y your, so your hyphen. That should be an M dash, not a hyphen. It's, it's just a lot harder to see if it's a little hyphen. A physician, then dot, dot, dot. Colette, hey, where are we anyway? Patron B did that as, yaha, a physician. Hmm, Colette, hey, could you tell me where we are? Patron C, my, an herbalist, you say. Colette, hey, where am I anyway? And patron D, oh my, a healer, you say, dot, 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 Colette. Hey, so what is this place? <laughs> yeah, so Colette's tone in that balloon in Japanese is like pretty casual. Like, hey, buddy, where, where am I, by the way? <laughs> it's not the way you would talk to some skeleton creature that you just met. Like, you're supposed to be a little more polite. But yeah, the way she's wording this in Japanese is like, um, excuse me, but like, hey, buddy, could, could you maybe tell me, me where I am? She's kind of being a bit um, quippy. I'd say is, is a good way of describing her tone here. And the skeleton is being very like, oh my goodness, like you're, an, you're a healer. Like, that's interesting. <laughs> like he's very excited that she's a healer for some secret reason that he's not letting on yet. So I like that patron A did your hyphen a position. Again, should be an M dash. An M dash is great. It shows like a person is starting to say something a certain way and then they pause awkwardly and then they finish saying that sentence a different way. So it, it implies, you're, like he was about to go, you're a physician? But he catches himself like, you're a physician. Then, that's that's a good vibe. I like that. Patron B, yaha, 
a physician? Hmm. So notice how patron B did that as well. Um, they had the first part of it, the skeleton, super excited, you're a physician, and then that italicized, hmm, strokes beard sort of thing. I, I am very intrigued by this, but for a secret reason, and now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna play it cool. Uh, patron C, my, an herbalist, you say, and then dot, dot, dot. So patron C had the words that the skeleton was saying being very all excited and then just had the dot, dot, dot. That was more like what it was in the Japanese. I don't think it convey, conveys his like two-facedness as well. But it's, it's, again, it's more the approach that the Japanese took. I feel like these last two English translations I, I showed capture the essence of what the skeleton is doing here more actually than the Japanese originally had it. The point is that he's really excited and then he's kind of falling silent um, because he's got a secret. Uh, patron D translated that as, oh my, a healer, you say, and then dot, dot, dot. I do like the healer in bold and italics. So we're cued into the fact that, oh, he's really interested that she's a healer, but we don't know why. <laughs> And then Colette, hey, so what is this place? So yeah, hey, so what is this place is good. Hey, where am I anyway from patron C is good. Hey, could you tell me where we are from patron B? Not quite as much the vibe. I do think like anyway is a great word to use in here. Patron A, hey, where are we anyway? That, that conveys sort of the quippy casualness of her tone here. And it makes it a little bit funnier. So the next uh, exchange, the skeleton says, and this is in black balloons, so... It's, it has a more like bum, bum, bum sort of look to it when you're looking at it in Japanese. And the font is also a little um, prettier. Koko wa meifu, meifu no kami, hadesu sama ga osameru shisha no kunida is the Japanese. So this is all a skeleton. Patron A translated this as, this is the underworld. It is the realm of the god Hades, the land of the dead. Yeah, bang on translation. <laughs> and it's nice and concise. Um, pa a patron B, tis the underworld, the land of the dead ruled by Hades. Notice how um, the order of the words was reworked a little bit. Um, the ruled by Hades part used to be in the first part of that balloon, but patron B moved it to the end. You can totally do that in manga. Sometimes it works a lot better. I like tis the underworld because it makes it sound a little more grand. Patron C, you're in the underworld, the land of the dead, where Lord Hades, the underworld's god, reigns supreme. Yeah, so again, patron C is, could just do to shorten everything <laughs> in, in this. Um, it's a little wordy. You're mentioning underworld twice. You don't necessarily have to. Um, you're in the underworld, the land of the dead, where Lord Hades, the underworld's god, reigns supreme. And yeah, Meifu is mentioned twice in the Japanese. But uh, Underworld is a lot longer than Meifu, just a thought. So you don't necessarily need to mention it twice. Again, it's a fine translation, but I don't think the Underworld's God is necessary. You're in the Underworld, the land of the dead, where Lord Hades reigns supreme. I think that would be a lot uh, more concise, and then you don't have as many letters in there. Patron D, uh, this is the Underworld, where King Hades, the God of Dead, rules. The land of the dead. Okay, the God of Death. Yeah, the God of Death is fine, the Lord, uh, King Hades is fine, Lord Hades is fine. So in the Japanese, I think they have that um, shisha no kuni da at, at the end in its own bubble. I think that's there mostly to emphasize this is where dead people are. <laughs> so that we get clued in, oh, Colette is, is dead, or she's where dead people are. Spoilers, she's not actually dead, <laughs> but uh, you, you're, you're in the land of the dead. I think that's why that is separated at the end in Japanese. So patrons A and D chose to keep uh, that at the end. And patrons B and C reworked the, the word order of all the things that the skeleton is saying. And I think kind of more for like fitting things in speech balloons properly. Uh, I personally think I do prefer keeping the land of the dead at the end as, as, as its own thing. Because as I said, I think the purpose it's serving in Japanese is just to, to emphasize, like, that's the final thought we're leaving the reader with. Like, she is in the land of the dead, as in, oh, she must be dead kind of thing. Okay, the next page, page 10. Colette says, Meifu? Hadesu samatte, tashika shinda ningen wo saiban ni kakete. Um, and then we've got kanji with ruby text that is different from the kanji, and the ruby text itself is kanji. So 
Um, the kanji is tengoku yuki ka, um, doya yuki ka, or iki, uh, kimeru kamisama yo ne, dot 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 question mark. Um, so tengoku iki, uh, going to heaven, destined to heaven, versus doya iki, um, versus uh, going to hell. And then the ruby text next to tengoku iki and doya iki is uh, good people and bad people, basically, if you look at those kanji. So I had somebody actually send me a DM recently asking me what to do when ruby text is different from uh, the kanji that the ruby text is next to. Uh, you know, should you translate the ruby text or should you translate the other text? It always depends on context, of course, as uh, translation always <laughs> depends on context. Uh, but yeah, I find that often when you have this sort of situation, um, sometimes explicitation is good. Like you might say, um, people bound for heaven, parentheses, good people, or people bound for hell, parentheses, bad people. Um, or you could just take one or the other. You could say, um, he's the guy who judges uh, if people go to heaven or hell, or he's the person who judges if people were good or bad. So I'd say like in this context, it's better to say, oh yeah, Hades, he's the guy who, um, who judges people um, and sends them either to heaven or hell. I think that's more, that's an easier, more clear way of translating that rather than fiddling <laughs> with the Ruby text in there. I think the Ruby text is kind of there just to remind the Japanese readers, oh yeah, heaven and hell and Hades. Um, they might not be as well versed in Greek mythology as uh, Westerners are, although I really am not sure. Um, anyway, so Colette, she's expositioning <laughs> for the audience, basically being like, aha, yes, Hades, the underworld, I know what that is. All right, so patron A translated th that as underworld. Hades, isn't that the god who judges the dead? The one who sends good people to paradise and bad people to prison? Okay, yeah, so prison, doya does mean prison, but if you look up the, um, the definition in Japanese, um, it also does technically mean like hell. However, um, I think I might know why Patron A translated that as prison instead of hell. Um, so we'll get back to that in a minute. That, that's not necessarily wrong. Uh, but yeah, Patron A chose to um, incorporate the ruby text and the kanji in there. The one who sends good people to paradise and bad people to prison. So that works really smoothly. That's one way you can do it. Patron A translated that as underworld and Hades. He's the god of the dead who judges whether people are good and go to heaven or bad and get locked away, right? Oh, get locked away. I really like that wording instead of literally prison. It's one of those things where, again, like doya, it means prison and hell also kind of in Japanese, but prison in English does not have that same nuance to it. It like, it literally just means prison. <laughs> uh, so I, I really like uh, Patron B's choice to say get locked away. I think that that works really super well. Um, it's a little long and a little wordy, but if you look at this balloon, it's nice and big and wide. So we can afford to be a little bit wordy. Uh, patron C did the underworld. Lord Hades, he's the god who judges people after they die, right? He sends the good to heaven and imprisons the evil. I love that, imprisons the evil. It's nice and short. Um, instead of gets locked away, just imprisons. And it, it, it keeps that uh, meaning in there without making it literally prison. <laughs> All right, cool. Patron D translated that as the underworld and Hades, isn't he that God who judges the dead, sending the good to heaven and locking up the wicked? I dig that too. Yeah, locking up, imprisoning. Yeah, so patron A's choice, send the bad people to prison. It doesn't quite work for me, but again, I think I know why <laughs> patron A chose the word, the actual word prison. All right, so the next panel, uh, the next panel, Colette notices, oh shit, I am in prison. I am behind bars. So I think this is why this is why in Japanese they chose the word doya instead of jigoku for hell. Um, it, doya can mean, means prison, but it also can kind of mean hell. Get locked up, basically. Um, so she's noticing, oh shit, I am behind bars. And there's a little label that says doya by it. So the next uh, frame, she says, Are, moしかして watashi shinjatta no? Shikamo. Um, then again, we've got the kanji with the ruby text that's different. So the kanji, doya iki, and Jesus, this ruby text is so small, I cannot read it without zooming in a bunch. Okay, 
Oh, and it's a bad image quality as well. Excellent. I love Bookwalker. Okay, Akuni. Okay, yeah, judged as a bad person is the Ruby text, basically. So, shikamo, doya ikitte, ya, chotto matte, ochitsuko, eh, to, ido ni tobikonde, ido ni tobikondara, shinu yo ne, watashi wa ahoda. Okay, so. Um, yeah, she's thinking about, in the previous panel, oh, Hades decides whether people go to heaven or hell, or rather, he, he decides whether people go to paradise or whether they get locked up, and then in the next frame she's noticing, oh, I'm locked up. And so, now she's wondering where she is. So let's see how the patrons did that. So yeah, patron A, Ack, the box label says prison, and that is a small label, so a word like prison you know, works there. And again, I think that's why patron A translated that as send bad people to prison, because literally in the next frame, the box label says prison. Colette, what, does that mean I'm dead? <laughs> and I'm where bad people go. No, wait a second, calm down, think back. I jumped down a well, and when you jump down wells, you die. I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, yeah, this all works pretty well. Again, the prison choice, it's, it's odd, but it's somewhat uh, inevitable. But let's see what the other patrons did. Uh, sound effect gasp uh, for the label locked away. So remember patron B um, worded that before as uh, whether people are good and go to heaven or are bad and get locked away. So patron B took the phrasing locked away for the label. You know, it's a small label, but you could put locked on the top and away on the bottom and fit that just fine in the label. So I think that still works. Um, Colette, me? Am I dead and locked up? Whoa, back it up, breathe. So I jumped in a, the well, then dot, dot, dot. If you jump into a well, that's fatal. And then narration, what kind of an idiot am I? I really like what kind of an idiot am I from Watashi wa Ahoda. <laughs> that's fatal instead of you die. That's just another way of wording uh, you die. All right, patron C, gasp, label, prison. So patron C's choice uh, wording that as imprisons the evil could have been incorporated into this label as imprisoned. The letterer would probably have to use a hyphen in there, which might look a little awkward, but yeah, I think prison works okay still here because uh, it was translated earlier as imprisons the evil, and then she finds, oh wait, shit, I'm literally in prison. I think that's all right. It's just a little odd wording it um, in her thoughts earlier as sends people to prison. Uh, Colette thoughts, huh? Wait, am I dead? And if I'm in the bad place, ha <laughs> ha, somebody's a fan of the good place, maybe. Um, my husband and I just recently rewatched the good place. It's such a good show. Anyway, and if I'm in the bad place, that means, no, wait, calm down. Um, let's see, I jumped in a well. If you jump in a well, yeah, you would, you would die, huh? Narration, I'm an idiot. I like that. All right, so patron D labeled it as dungeon. There, it doesn't have as much of a connection then to the former line of uh, locking up the wicked. Although again, where do you lock people up? Dungeons, maybe there's dungeons in hell. I think I like patron B's solution for this awkward doya business the best, locked away and locked away. I think that connects the ideas uh, a little bit better. Um, Colette's thinking, huh? Did I quite possibly die? <laughs> and I'm locked up, which, wait, let's see. I jumped into the well and, um, right. Jumping into wells means you die. I am an idiot. Yeah, so again, Colette, uh, a lot of her her tone in these pages is rather quippy. And I think all the patrons did a pretty good job with making her rather quippy in this little part right here. So I really like what all the patrons did here. Okay, so the next panel, Colette says, Iya, mate. Shisha no kuni te koto wa byo nin ga inai te koto yo. Sore te tsumari. And then sound effects, poku poku poku. And then she thinks, Hataraka nakute ii. And then that little label says, uh, Choju yo. Oh, Juyo is important, Cho is super, so super important. All right, so she's freaking out before, and now she's like, wait a minute, this is actually a good thing. <laughs> so patron A translated that as, no, wait, if I'm in the land of the dead, that means there are no sick people, which means think, 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 shing, I don't have to work, box, crucial point. 
I like Crucial Point and Think 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 for Poku Poku Poku. This is a situation where, you know, you could translate that sound effect as what it sounds like. It's kind of the sound of her thoughts percolating, right? Poku Poku Poku. Think of like a coffee percolator. And so her thoughts are percolating. Um, think 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 is more just translating it literally as this is what she is doing. And that's also a choice that works. Uh, patron B. Hold up. In the land of the dead, no one's sick. In other words, chuk chuk chuk, cha ching, I'm free! Crucial. I like I'm free <laughs> instead of the literal I don't have to work. Again, it's quippier and she's being rather quippy. And I like the italicized land of the dead, although I think it might have been stronger if just the word dead was italicized. I'm in the land of the dead. No one's sick. In other words, chuk chuk chuk. And note how Patron B chose more like the sound of her thoughts percolating. Chuk chuk chuk. It kind of reminds me of a clock ticking, which also kind of works like tick tick tick. Like my brain, my brain gears are kind of whirring. And then cha ching. Uh, that's often a sound that we associate with, you know, getting money, <laughs> but also, you know, with winning a jackpot of some sort. So I like that too. Uh, Patron C. But wait, if this is the land of the dead, see patron C italicized just dead, I do think that works a little bit better, then there aren't any sick people here. In other words, oh, sound effects, wait for it. I love that. <laughs> uh, Colette thoughts, I don't have to work. Sound effect, ding. Label, important revelation. Yeah, important revelation, that would be kind of difficult to fit into that uh, box for the letterer. You'd have to like hyphenate each word and it would look a little bit odd. But I, I really like the rest of it. I really like uh, wait for it <laughs> for Poku Poku Poku. It's funny. Um, let's see, patron D. Hold up. Land of the dead means no one here is sick. So in other words, tick, 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 ding, no more work. And then text a big deal. I kind of like the a big deal choice, uh, just purely from a lettering standpoint. <laughs> I can imagine it would be very easy to fit a big deal into that box and it would not look awkward. It's not exactly the vibe, something more like a uh, crucial or um, crucial point from patron A is, is a little more what it actually is. But from a lettering standpoint, I really like a big deal. Uh, and then Colette is all excited now in the next panel. <laughs> Heart mark. Heart mark, heart mark. Sound effects, goro, goro. And then she says in small print, tsumetakte kimochi. <laughs> and then she says, doyatte tsumari hitori bea dashi. Nanda shinu no mo arukunai jan. All right, so let's see how the patrons did that. Patron A. Oh no! What a perfect place for me! Roll, roll. It's so nice and cool here. In prison, I get a room all to myself. Being dead isn't so bad after all. At all. Not after all. After all would work well there. Uh, let's look at patron B. Friggin' yes! No more work! I love this place! Nice and cool too. Roll, roll. And a room all to myself. Dying's not so bad after all. Yeah, I like that. This is a little more the vibe. Nice and cool too. Maybe ever so slightly confusing because, um, it's unclear if she means she's in the Japanese. She's saying it's it's not too hot here. Like up up there on the surface, it was too hot uh, for her. But now it's you know it's nice and refreshing. Uh, so maybe a different word for cool because it seems like she could be saying like it's groovy, <laughs> it's cool instead of temperature cool. Uh, but yeah, I really like this vibe here. Uh, she again, she's quippy and she does speak in a bit of a contemporary tone. So I really like friggin' yes. A kick ass would be pretty cool too. It really is that vibe. Uh, patron C. Oh man, this place is made for me. Roll, roll. It's so cool and comfy. Okay, yeah. See, in this case, just just rewording that a little bit. Um, it's a little clearer now that this cool means temperature wise, uh, rather than groovy or awesome, bodacious. <laughs> uh, Colette, I'm in a jail cell, which means I get even my own. I even get my own room. Being dead isn't bad at all. That's a little exposition-y. I'm in a jail cell, which means I even get my own room. That's a little odd. Could be reworked. Could be uh, tightened up. Yeah, like patron B just did, and a room all to myself. Dying's not so bad after all. In the Japanese, it does say, like, if you're in a jail cell, that means you get a room all to yourself. Um, 
Yeah, patron A's was a little tighter. In prison, I get a room all to myself. Uh, patron D. No way! This is like my own personal paradise. It feels so nice and cool. Feels so nice and cool. Again, that makes it a little clearer that it's temperature cool instead of groovy or awesome cool. Uh, fwip fwip for goro goro. Uh, I even get a whole jail cell to myself. Maybe dying isn't so bad. I li Yeah, I even get a whole jail cell to myself. I like that. And I like, no way! This is like my own personal paradise. Yeah, it's a little quippier that way. I dig it. And then somebody says, Ro kara dero musume. And it's the skeletons. There's more of them now. In the next panel, they say, Omae kushi to itta na. And then Colette is saying, like, on her head, there's a little aside, fueta. Like, there's, they multiplied. Um, the skeletons then say, Hadesu sama no yamai wo naoshite moraoka. So let's see how the patrons translated that. Patron A, come out of your cell, girl. You said you're a physician, right? Come and heal Lord Hades' illness. Huh? What the heck? I wonder... Ah, okay, Patron A just missed that there was a little aside on Colette's head when she sang Fueta. Uh, patron B, you must come with us, girl. A physician, you say. You must heal Lord Hades' illness. And then Colette aside, there are more of them. I'm not really understanding the connection. You must come with us, girl, and then a physician, you say? It's like, if she, if, if that response uh, had been immediately after she said, I'm a physician, then a physician, you say, would make more sense. But this, this reaction is coming a little while after she said it. It's more like, you said you're a physician. Like, didn't you? Or like, it's a little more that vibe rather than a physician, you say, which would be like the immediate response. Uh, everything else is fine. You must heal Lord Hades' illness. And then Colette aside, there are more of them. <laughs> there are more of them isn't exactly quippy. It's just stating something. Um, I like they multiplied. <laughs> um, let's see. Patron C. Step out of that. Step out of the cell, girl. You said you were an herbalist, right? Yeah, that's more the vibe. You said you were an herbalist, right? Then perhaps we'll have you examine Lord Hades. Colette aside, they multiplied. Yeah, I really dig this. Uh, patron D. Skeleton, come out of there, girl. You said you were a healer. <laughs> Colette, you brought friends. I really like that. That's so quippy. Um, then perhaps we shall have you cure King Hades' illness. Very nice. Okay, so Colette goes, eh? And then uh, the sound effects as they're dragging her out uh, is jita bata. That is the sound effect for somebody kicking and struggling. Uh, Colette says, douyu koto yo? Skeleton says, wareda ga hadesu sama, hades sama, hadesu sama wa, and then Colette replies, Yokunai! Again, quippy. Quippy AF. All right, so like, oh, Hades got this mysterious illness, so it's, it's perfect timing that you came here. And she's like, it's not perfect. All right, so patron A. Uh, Colette says, huh? What the heck? Skeletons. Lord Hades has been afflicted with a mysterious illness recently. I like afflicted. But unfortunately, there are no physicians in the underworld. It's lucky you're here, Colette. It's not! <laughs> struggle, struggle. Okay, that works. I feel like it could be a little quippier, but it is pretty good. Uh, patron B. Uh, Colette. What? Why? Sound effects. Put me back. <laughs> I like that for Jita Bata. Put me back. You can do that sometimes with sound effects. You can, you know, you can make it, uh, again, the sound of her struggling, uh, or you could translate it as struggle, struggle, or you can do something more creative like Patron B did with Put Me Back. Uh, skeleton, our Lord Hades fell mysteriously ill not long ago. The underworld has no physicians, you see. You arrived just in time. No, I didn't. <laughs> okay, that has that quippy vibe. Uh, patron C. Colette narration, huh? Colette, hey, what's this about? Skeleton, our master Hades came down with a mysterious illness a few days ago that's left him bedridden. Again, this patron C has a bit of a wordiness issue. <laughs> Just in general, try to make your translations a bit tighter so that they fit in the balloons better. Uh, it's also not just so they fit in the balloons better. It, it punchier dialogue, it just, it's less, it's catchier, 
it um, helps progress the story better. It works better with action scenes, you know, to not have a character pause and say a very, very long speech. Like whenever you watch an action movie, just take notice of how, what the character dialogue is like, because action movies tend to have punchier dialogue. Um, anyway, there aren't any herbalists in the underworld, so we've been helpless to do anything. You came at the perfect time. Colette, not perfect for me. I like that. See, that's the quippiness we're looking for. They're like, oh yes, it's perfect. And she's like, it is absolutely not. <laughs> like bullshit. It's that kind of vibe. And then the sound effects for Jitabata, flail, flail. Yeah, that's more like a word translation of what Jitabata means. Flail, flail, struggle, struggle, that sort of thing. Patron D, Colette thinks what? And then Colette, what's the meaning of this? Uh, skeleton says, some time ago, our king was struck by a mysterious illness. I like struck. And regrettably, I like regret regrettably, there are no healers in the underworld. Luckily, you're here. No, not lucky. <laughs> flail, flail. Yeah, no, not lucky. That's good. That's very quippy. Okay, the next page. Colette is screaming in bold text, And then sound effects, <laughs> Skeleton replies, And then Colette says, <laughs> Alright, so let's see how patron A, again, extremely quippy exchange. Um, Colette, I made up my mind to never work again. Tug, tug, tug. Skeleton, listen, or I'll throw you back in prison. Colette, please do. <laughs> I dig that. Uh, patron B, Colette says, I'm never working again. It's rather I, I decided to never work again. Or I don't want to ever work again. I'm never working again is missing a little bit of the nuance. Uh, but I like that it's short. <laughs> the sound effects, Scrabble. I suppose, yeah, I suppose the letterer could do like the word scrabble, like over the goo gee 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 gee. Skeleton, if you shan't obey, I like that. It's back to the cell with you. That's lovely. And then collect, please. I, I think please do or yes, please would probably work a little bit better than just please. Because please in this case, it could be her like screaming, please, mercy. Um, instead of saying, oh, yes, please, that sounds amazing. It's a little tiny bit unclear that that's what this please means. But I really like if you shan't obey, it's back to the cell with you for the skeleton. That gives him a great character voice. Uh, patron C, Colette, I already decided I'm never working again. Sound effect, rrrrg. <laughs> I like rrrrg. Uh, skeleton, if you refuse, I'll throw you right back in that cell, Colette. By all means, put me back. Yeah, and again, I think by all means, exclamation point, would do the trick. And it's punchier and a little quippier. But yeah, by all means is a good translation for the onigashimasu. Uh, patron D, Colette, I decided I'll never work again. I think it's more like I decided I'd, I decided I'd never work again. I decided I'll never work again. Eh, they both work. Uh, sound effect, stretch <laughs> for Kugi Gigi Gigi. I don't know about stretch. It is what's happening, like if you look at her arms. Um, skeleton, if you don't do as we say, it's back to the dungeon. Colette, yes please. Yeah, I like yes please. Very quippy. Stretch. I don't know why I am not vibing as much with stretch. I think because it turns into stretch <laughs> with the elongated E. Maybe stretch, maybe elongating the R would give it more of an R sort of um, feel to it. Because it gives me this sort of R feeling to it. Uh, that stretch, stretch kind of to me feels, I don't know, softer, smoother. I think it's more just a personal preference, but that's something to think about with sound effects. Uh, the visceral reaction that it gives the reader. Um, next panel, Skeleton says, Ora. Man, <laughs> that is not like what normal Japanese people talk like. This is very old. Um, pitan, bitan for the sound effect. Uh, it's so awkward for me to read this because this is so like super uber polite and old Japanese. <laughs> All right, let's see. Patron A translated that as, here, you're in the king's presence. Straighten up. I like it. Plop. Good 
sound effect. Lord Hades, we've taken the liberty to bring you a physician. Yeah, taken the liberty is, is good wording there. Because it's like, Hades didn't ask for a physician. They did this without his permission, more or less. Taken the liberty is good. Might you allow her to do an examination? I like that. Uh, patron B. Before you is Lord Hades, act thusly. <laughs> thusly, act thusly. I don't know if thusly is exactly correct. It's to tell someone to do something thus or thusly, it's like act in a way that we previously instructed you or like act in a way that I'm instructing you to act right now. Rather, the skeleton is just being like, hey, act sharp, be polite, stand up straight. It's more like that rather than act thusly. Uh, but act thusly is nice and short, <laughs> which is good. Splat, I like splat. Uh, Lord Hades, pardon me, I, I've a physician for you. Uh, probably I've brought. You could say I've a physician for you. That's not entirely wrong. It, it is an old, an older way of speaking and wording things. It's more like I've got a physician for you, but I've a physician. I have a physician for you. It is technically correct. It just initially to me, it looked like a, a word was omitted, but it wasn't. Please allow her to take a look at you. Oh, my foster kittens are mewing in the next room over. <laughs> They want their lunch. Okay, I'm going to try to power through this. This video is, as always, getting quite long. All right, patron C. Have some dignity. The king is before you. I really like that. That's really the heart of what the skeleton is saying. Um, Lord Hades, I apologize for my impertinence, but I've taken the liberty of bring. Yeah, you don't need I, I apologize for my imper impertinence exactly. Just, I've taken the liberty of bringing an herbalist. Or you could say, Lord Hades, I apologize for my impertinence, but I've brought you an herbalist. Um, taken the liberty and apologizing for your impertinence are kind of the same thing. So you can tighten that up and just use one or the other. Please, just this once, allow her to perform an examination. Again, it's a bit wordy, like a bit long, but um, I, like, I like the uh, character voice of please allow her to perform an examination. Uh, thunk <laughs> for the sound effects. I like thunk. Uh, patron D, skeleton. Now straighten up. You're in the presence of the king. I like straighten up. King Hades, we've taken the liberty of fetching a healer. I like fetching. And taking the liberty is a really good way of wording that. Would you please allow her to examine you this one time? I like this one time. Yeah, patron C did the this one time in, in uh, previously. Please, just this once, allow her to perform an examination versus patron D's, would you please allow her to examine you this one time? It's a little tighter that way without all those commas and it's a little less clunky, so it flows better. All right, the next panel, uh, Colette says, kso, <laughs> uh, under her breath, and then she's thinking, so yeba watashi wo akuda to handan shita no ga kono wo sama na nan no yo ne? And then she thinks again, diyu dake demo kiku ka? Uh, patron A translated those thoughts as, now that I think of it, isn't this king the one who judged me to be a bad person? Maybe I'll just ask him why. Okay, that is exactly what she's saying. It's kind of more like, I, sh I should at least, guess I should at least ask him why. Oh, right, and uh, the kuso is darn it. Depending on your publisher and their standards, uh, kuso, you can't always translate as shit, um, even though it literally means excrement. Um, patron D translated that as damn it. That's usually my go-to for soul. Hades is who decided, is who decided. I was a bad, I was bad and locked me up, right? Hades is the one who decided would be more correct, but I suppose uh, shortened for length. I can at least ask why. I like I can at least ask why. It, it, yeah, it has the vibe of I might as well at least ask why, like while I'm here, it kind of has that vibe to it. So I can at least ask why. I think that's a good way of wording that. Uh, patron C. Now that they mention it, isn't this the king who decided I was evil? Ah, okay, so there's a note. So, um, the skeleton speech is masculine, but I know from reading the series that skeletons don't really have genders, so for later in the series reasons, I went with they, them. Anyway, Colette seems a conscientious enough person not to assume. Yeah, th that's fine. Um, yeah, with, with gender, with non-gendered characters or characters where you don't really know their gender yet and you don't want to assign pronouns because it might come back later and bite you in the ass. Um, yeah, for this workaround, they is fine. Uh, yeah, skeletons don't really have genders. <laughs> um, now the, and, and they also, there are more, more than one skeleton anyway, so they totally works fine here. Um, 
But yeah, it's also a good idea if you don't know the gender of a character to try to find ways to just not have a pronoun at all. There are workarounds um, and they're hard sometimes, but it's sometimes better to just do that uh, rather than assume a gender, assume a pronoun. Oh, but yeah, now that they mention it, isn't this the king who decided I was evil? So yeah, but it doesn't always have to be like now that you mention it or now that they mention it. It's more um, now that I think about it, it, it can kind of also be the vibe of so yeah, but, or it could be like, wait a minute, dot, dot, dot. It doesn't always have to be now that they mention it or, you know, aha, you saying this brought this thing to mind. It's not necessarily a response to somebody telling you something. Um, and then Colette's aside for Cousseau, this jerk. Again, like, it's not necessarily self-censorship or censorship um, if you translate Cousseau as something that's not profane, because Cousseau is not as profane as shit. And also a lot of um, publishing and broadcasting standards, they, they will not let you use shit. It's considered too strong a word. Uh, so this jerk is fine for Cousseau. And then Colette thinks, maybe I'll just ask his reasoning. Yeah, it's rather I might as well uh, ask. Uh, patron D, uh, Cousseau as damn it. That's fine. That's usually my go-to. So this is the king who judged me to be wicked. Maybe I'll ask him why. Yeah, the tone there is, is pretty casual, it, like it's supposed to be. It's very casual, like, yeah, maybe I'll just ask him why. Like, since I'm here, it, it's that kind of vibe. And then the Japanese Colette goes on to say to the curtain, Mosh mosh, chotto detekite kudasaru. And then there's shin, dot dot dot. Uh, Colette says, Mosh mosh, kikoete masu? Exclamation point, question mark. And then there's a big su as the curtain comes aside and a hand uh, stretches out to touch her. And then she has an exclamation point. All right, so patron A translated that as, excuse me, could you come out please? And then silence for the sound effect. Hello, can you hear me? Patron B, hello, would you please come out a moment? Silence. Hello, are you hearing me? And then stretch for the su. Patron A did not translate the suit sound effect. Uh, patron C, hello, sir, may I come in? Sound effects, crickets. <laughs> Colette, hello, can you hear me? Sound effect, slip. And patron D, excuse me, could you come out for a moment? And then sway for Sheen and they made a note, uh, as in the curtains, silence seems redundant with the dot, dot, dot bubble. So trying something a little different, yeah. That makes sense. Then Colette says, hello, can you hear me? Question mark, exclamation point, and then swish for the su. Yeah, so as patron, was it C? Yeah, crickets for Sheen. I like crickets for Sheen. I've, I've used that myself uh, because yeah, Sheen is the sound effect for silence, but it's not always best to just go silence dot dot dot. Sometimes sh is good, like S-H-H or crickets or, uh, you know, cold shoulder even, if like a, a character is responding to somebody else's question with Sheen and looking away like that character is giving them a cold shoulder, you can get pretty creative with Sheen. Uh, so yeah, Colette, again, she's being kind of quippy here. She's like, um, hello, <laughs> can you please come out? Like she's being polite in the first one, but also kind of, kind of mock polite, if that makes any sense. Like Mosh Mosh is kind of being slightly rude. <laughs> <laughs> the kudasaru part, you know, it, it's on the surface, it's polite, but it's also kind of, kind of impolite. It's kind of being silly and quippy. And then mosh moshi kikuete masu is more kind of rude, frankly, um, and, and also very quippy. So patron, patron A is pretty neutral. Uh, excuse me, could you come out please? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, patron B gets a little more... Uh, distinction there, the first line, hello, would you please come out a moment? It's more polite. And then, hello, are you hearing me? Uh, I think it's patron C and D, though, that give it a little more color. Um, hello, sir, may I come in for the first one? You know, polite, overly. And then, hello, I really like that. The, um, the low separated from the hell and then the italics. Hello, can you hear me? That, that really gets across that she's kind of being rude here. And also getting a little irritated that Hades is not responding to her. And then patron uh, D, excuse me, could you come out for a moment? You know, more polite. And then, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, it's more patron C that really gave it the uh, the attitude, I think, that the other patrons were missing there. 
Uh, and then for the sound effect of su for the hand reaching out, again, patron A did not translate that. Patron B did it as stretch. That That's pretty good because it's, it's more the sound effect for the hand reaching out to her than for curtains. Slip. Su, uh, slip does tend to be a pretty decent catch-all translation for su, although it can be a bit lacking at times. Uh, patron D translated it as swish. Swish is fine too. Yeah, again, the su is, it's the sound effect of the hand reaching out and I suppose it could also be the sound effect of the curtains parting, but I think it really is more the sound effect of the hand reaching out and almost like stopping short of touching her. So I, I like patron B's the best probably. With just stretch. <laughs> and again, it's a word rather than a sound, uh, but I think that works. All right, that is the end of part one of uh, Colette Decides to Die. We're gonna do part two later this month. This is the part where I would tell you if you wanted to join this group and be one of the translators uh, to join my $5 tier on Patreon, but I'm actually going to pause uh, this series for a few months. Got a lot of stuff going on in my life right now. I'm gonna be very busy. So um, the series will not resume until July at the earliest, uh, but possibly later. Uh, so stay tuned if you're interested in being a translator in this series. There might be a chance for you later. Uh, for now, uh, thank you to the patrons who did participate in this, uh, with special thanks to Data Fox, Greg, Henry Roaming, Jacob Bell, and Lay Fam. And I hope to see you in the next episode of Let's Translate Manga Colette Decides to Die.